Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm so excited today to present our work about uh, hacking bicycles. Uh, as all of you can imagine, uh, the cycling uh, basically can be very competitive. And uh, with this level of, I mean, competition, there's a long history of uh, cheating and scandals over the years. And these head titles that I brought here, there are just very few examples of uh, such as stories during recent years. Uh, today, together, we are going to explore um, that's uh, how basically introducing a new technology like wireless gear shifting uh, can open up new ways for cheating in this specific sport. Uh, previously and traditionally, all the components on a bike were connected by uh, the mechanical cables. Uh, but uh, wireless technology has now removed uh, all, the, all these cables, basically, and make this communication happen over the air. And all the major manufacturers like Shimano and SRAM are developing, I mean, their own ways of uh, wireless gear shifting uh, in order to offer a better performance, better design, and uh, also in this case, uh, basically the bikes uh, would have lighter weights. Uh, and it's gonna be a proper communication between the shifters and trailers using this wireless gear shifting protocols. Uh, but the main question to ask here is that uh, what are the basically challenges that can happen here? And can, I mean, something like wireless doping be possible here in these scenarios? Uh, to answer the latest question, let's take a look at potential risks and issues. Uh, in some basically specific scenarios like professional races, any unintended gear shift can significantly impact the rider's performance or even force them to stop or uh, snap the chain on their bikes. And because the nature of the attack is completely wireless, uh, it leaves no traces and uh, the victim remains completely unaware of what's going for uh, his bike. And uh, just imagine uh, a scenario that, for example, a rider is climbing a mountain and in this situation, uh, the bike would be on uh, the smallest gear in the front trailer and if the attacker basically targets this specific bike, it can cause uh, the front trailer uh, to go to the lar uh, largest gear, and it's gonna be hard for the rider to control its bike. And in some places like uh, race, uh, race or some uh, plotons, for example, uh, where the riders are in a very uh, close proximity and they have a very high speed, uh, such a disruption can, uh, I mean, cause uh, some bike crashes or can make, I mean, problems for multiple uh, riders uh, in the road. Uh, due to significance uh, of uh, Shimano in the bike, uh, in the bike industry and uh, their important role uh, in the cycling, uh, we chose uh, Shimano wireless gear shifting as a case study. And uh, with that, we captured and analyzed over the air uh, the Shimano signals using black box methodology, which means that we just, uh, I mean, passively captured these signals without doing any kind of uh, invasive uh, activities. And we tried to analyze the Shimano wireless gear shifting and uh, to identify the security protocols. Uh, and we demonstrated that uh, some attacks, like replay attacks, uh, are effective up to 10 meters without any kind of amplifiers. We were also able to target a specific uh, bike to disrupt its communication without affecting uh, the functionality of the other bikes. Uh, at the end of this research, we also uh, will suggest and discuss about the potential countermeasures that can be implemented uh, to mitigate such attacks. Uh, let's start with analyzing the Shimano uh, wireless gear shifting protocol. Uh, we, to be more specific, basically, we use two group sets from Shimano, 105 DI2 and Dora Ace DI2. Uh, the 105 uh, group set, it's a very popular uh, wireless gear shifting system that uh, is being used by uh, both amateur cyclists and professional cyclists. And Dora Ace DI2 is a very professional high-level group set that specifically has been designed for uh, professional races. And we chose, I mean, these two different group sets uh, as our case study. 
We also use USRP V210 uh, in order to be able to capture and transmit uh, the signals. Uh, any kind of software-defined radio that is capable of, uh, I mean, capturing and transmitting signal over uh, 2.4 gigahertz band is, uh, can be a proper, basically, choice. Uh, like, for example, HackRF, Pluto SDR, and Lime SDR. Uh, but we specifically use the USRP V210. Uh, we also use another tool called the Universal Radio Hacker uh, to analyze uh, the protocol, and also we use uh, this tool uh, in order to conduct uh, the attacks that uh, we will discuss uh, later. Uh, Shimano is using, I mean, a very specific protocol, uh, th their own basically proprietary protocol, uh, in order to communicate between the shifter and the trailer on a bike. Uh, the first step to understand this protocol is basically uh, trying to uh, familiar with the physical layer parameters. Uh, some of the basic physical layer parameters like frequency, bandwidth, and modulation can be extracted from the FCC documents. Uh, from the FCC documents, we got to know that, for example, the modulation is GFSK, uh, but uh, without knowing uh, the exact modulation parameters, we weren't able to demodulate this signal. Uh, using the tool that uh, we mentioned in the previous slide, uh, which is URH, and through a lot of uh, basically trial and errors and based on our uh, visual observation, finally we were able to extract these uh, modulation parameters and we were able to successfully uh, demodulate uh, the signals that we captured over the air. In Shimano gear shifting system, uh, every time that the rider press the shift button, the shifter transmits some uh, command packets. Uh, and the trailer basically responds with some acknowledgments. And every time that uh, the rider press the bottom, it will uh, be at least three packets, I mean, uh, from the shifter to the trailer. Uh, this protocol is specifically used uh, the packet redundancy to make sure that the trailer is uh, receiving all the uh, commands that are coming from the shifter. Uh, but in a, a specific scenarios where the shifter is not receiving any acknowledgement, uh, the shifter will, inst uh, will start uh, sending a burst of packets. Uh, and to be exact, I mean, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to transmit 748 packets in 1.5 seconds. Um, after uh, successfully uh, demodulating the signal, we were able to distinguish different segments and different parts uh, in this uh, unknown protocol that we had. Um, there are several different uh, parts, uh, for example, like preamble, protocol identifier, and packet type, and so on, uh, in the command packets and the acknowledgement packets. All these uh, basically different uh, parts are trying to work together in order to uh, just uh, a proper communication uh, happen between the shifter and the trailer. But uh, from this uh, basically analyzing uh, the packet uh, structure that we had, uh, the most important observation that we reached to uh, was that uh, none of these packets uh, have any kind of timestamps or sequence number. And this makes this protocol uh, vulnerable to replay attacks. Now let's uh, take a look at two uh, attacks that we conducted, replay attack and targeted jamming attack. Uh, whenever a rider uh, basically press the shifting bottom, uh, the shifter transmit the command over the air and it will cause a change in the gear position at the trailer side. Uh, the attacker in between is able to capture the signal over the air and in any future time, the attacker is able to transmit the recorded signal, and it will also cause a change in the gear position at the trailer side. Uh, and this uh, basically recorded signal that the attacker uh, has uh, can be effective as long as the same trailer is uh, paired with the same shifter. Uh, we confirmed that, uh, I mean, with uh, just testing our packets or retransmitting our packets, even months after we um, initially recorded uh, the packets. In order to study basically the effective distance of the replay attack, uh, we had several experiments in which we tested the success rate at various distances. As you can see in the figure, 
up to nine meter, uh, the basically rate of uh, success in, in the gear shifting it's 100%, which means that all the uh, replays uh, are gonna be successful. Uh, but in 10 meters, uh, we have the average number of 10 out of 11 uh, gear shifts uh, successful. And after that, basically, the distance is too long for uh, performing the replay attack. Here, we want to, again, emphasize that the, uh, the attacker does not require any physical uh, access to capture, I mean, the signals from the bike. Um, for example, in a race uh, or a situation or something like that, uh, the attacker can, uh, during the training sessions or uh, before that, or even during the race, the attacker is able to capture the signal that they need and perform the attack. Uh, and also capturing one upshifting and one uh, downshifting, uh, it's enough for the attacker to create any uh, sequence that they want with the different uh, intervals. Uh, this is specific protocol that we are looking at, uh, it's using a fixed uh, frequency, which is 2.478 gigahertz. And it's using, I mean, a, a one specific frequency by nature. I mean, this uh, protocol is uh, vulnerable uh, to jamming. But what is more, I mean, interesting and more desirable for the attacker is being able to target uh, one specific bike and, uh, bike and disrupt its communication without affecting the operation of the other bikes. Uh, for this uh, basically goal, we introduced our jammer uh, in which uh, the jammer, I mean, continuously transmit uh, the command packets from the targeted bike with some vacant intervals. During these vacant intervals, uh, the other bikes, I mean, can communicate prop uh, properly while uh, the targeted bike is not accepting any new commands. Uh, but what is uh, basically good duration for this bike interval? According to our experiments, if we chose uh, this uh, duration, 120 microsecond, uh, it gives a chance to the other, uh, all other bikes to communicate properly uh, while it stops bike, uh, the targeted bike uh, from uh, functioning completely. Uh, here you can see a demonstration of our attack in which uh, two cyclists basically they are trying to compete with, you, uh, with each other and when they reach to the spoofing area uh, you can see that uh, the targeted uh, basically cyclists cannot uh, keep up. And this is the bike that we had that we installed the Shimano shifter and railers on that. And this is also the attacker setup, uh, which is a USRP B210 and one laptop that can completely fits in one backpack. Of course, I mean, we need to mention that uh, according to the requirements, this setup can be, I mean, smaller and smaller. Yeah, here you can see that our targeted cyclist, yeah, it's just not going well. And this is also the front trailer that specifically was targeted in this demonstration. And as a proof of concept, you can see that here the trailer is just changing the gear uh, without uh, nobody, I mean, uh, pressing the bottom on the shifter. And in some distance, you can see the attacker's uh, setup that it's uh, transmitting the signal. Uh, in order to mitigate um, such attack, there are some basically traditional um, methods that can be used, like uh, using rolling codes or timestamps, for example. And with all these methods, uh, basically, uh, they are all ensuring that each command signal is unique and they cannot be reused in the future. Uh, but uh, each of these methods have their own challenges. For example, using timestamps need uh, all the components in the protocol to be fully synchronized. Uh, another method that specifically in this use case can be 
very, I mean, uh, effective is implementing distance-based restriction. Because in this specific use case, we know that, I mean, the trailer and the shifter on the bike always are having a fixed uh, distance, for example, one meter or something, and we can, I mean, put some restriction for accepting any other uh, signals except uh, from this distance. And this measuring distance can happen by estimating time of arrival or uh, some other uh, well-known methods. And in our responsible disclosure process, uh, we notified Shimano about these vulnerabilities and we provided uh, a detailed information on the nature of the vulnerabilities, all the uh, version of the components that we use and how we basically pre uh, perform this attack. And we also discussed all the potential countermeasures that they can implement. Uh, we assisted Shimano for replicating the issues and Shimano has acknowledged the vulnerabilities uh, and uh, they, they patched the vulnerabilities and they will be rolling the updates uh, to the worldwide soon. Uh, to conclude, let's uh, review the key insight from uh, our research. Uh, we conducted the first security analysis of wireless gear shifting, and we were able to identify uh, some vulnerabilities like replay attack and targeted jamming attack. We also demonstrated that how an attacker can target one specific uh, bike and take control uh, of the uh, bike's gear shifting system. And we also dis uh, discussed several uh, countermeasures that manufacturers could use to reduce the impact of the attack. Uh, in this research, basically, we hope that uh, we could uh, improve the security measures uh, for this specific protocol and all similar protocols. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. If there is any question, please feel free to ask.